Um, so we're going to create this scene in Blender. I'm still playing around with this new feature, but uh, I hope to make a more professional looking one in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm still playing with the new concept, but let me show you what I've got. Select everything, press X, delete, press Shift A, mesh, and we're going to make use of, let's use a UV sphere. Once you've got the UV sphere, yeah, shade it smooth, and we are ready to go. First thing I want to do is I want to press Shift D to duplicate the sphere, then right click to lock it in place where it was, tab, go into edit mode, right click, with obviously I'm on vertex select, right click, merge vertices at center. Now we've got a single vert in the middle. With that single vert, I want to hold in shift and select this outer rim over here. For perspective tab, go into object mode and select this outer rim over here and click control P to make the big sphere the circle. And I'm quite happy with that. Next thing I want to do, well, let's call, rename this other one called emission. Or let's call it particle emission. And select the sphere again, press Shift D, right click. And this one we're going to rename the emission. So the one is the particle system, the other one's the emission. I should have renamed the other one better. All right. Now, first thing we want to do is select our particle emitter. Let's rename it. And we want to go to our particle settings, add our particle setting. And uh, let's make this end at 100 frames. Let's make the animation end at 110 frames. And let's make the lifespan of what we're doing about seven frames. You can always play with this to make it the effect look longer. The next thing I want to do is go to our velocity, make sure normals is set to zero so it follows on track perfectly. The velocity is not taken into account. And we also want to make field weights gravity zero because we don't want gravity to play a part in what we're trying to do for the effect we're going for. Next thing we want to do is, um, also we've noticed that everything set to faces, that's fine. We'll leave it as is, but perhaps we want to remove random order and then go to our render settings and currently it's a halo. All right, so everything is set up here, but now we need to change this to object. And the object we want to select is our emission. And this is pretty much done. Now we can click on our emission Material settings, new, change this to emission. Choose the color that you like. I'm just going to choose this color and give it a strength of 10. Change to my render view mode. This will all be done in Eevee. So I'm going to switch now to our render properties and turn on bloom. There we go. And I'd like to have these on even if they do nothing. <laughs> right, so that's looking pretty cool to me. Press tab, go into object mode. Well, we're already in object mode. The next thing I want you to do is click over here, turn on this, and make sure this emission is not visible on our viewport or when we render it out, because that'll create problems. Let's select our sphere and let's give it a material. I'm gonna give this sphere a glossy BSDF. Make it, let's make this 0 0.1. It's gonna look like silver now. And let's add an environmental texture. Um, from the previous tutorial, as you know, I'm just going to use the moon, the image I got from NASA as the environmental texture, because why not? <laughs> All right, okay, that's looking pretty good. Next thing we want to do now that everything is set up is we want to create a path. So we're going to press Shift A, and we are going to select curve and we'll use a bezier curve in this example numpad 7 let's go into wireframe mode so we can see press g x 1 make sure that this point is over there which is important press tab go into edit mode and select this edge over here and just start pressing e and moving this around to a pattern that you like r to rotate e to pull r to rotate and you can create a very interesting path and perhaps we should create a loop-de-loop. -loop. Press E. E. G. 
protect. And yeah, that's uh, perhaps we want to press tab, go into object mode, and just uh, press control A, apply all. That's very important. And if you want to scale this out now, you can after you've applied all. Perhaps you want to scale it by three. And then we want to select our sphere that is the parent to our particle emitter. Go to our object, go to our object constraint properties, add a constraint called to follow path, select the Bezier curve and follow curve, click animate, press spacebar to watch this in action. Go back to keyframe one, change to render view, spacebar. So currently the emission is too small and too few for it to work the way we want. Perhaps we want to select, also perhaps this is, we forgot to press control A again and click apply. It's looking a bit better, but not great. The other thing we want to do now is just do some corrections. In the sphere on the particle emission over here, we want to go to our particle settings and put this on one. So it's the same size. If you want to be a little bit more quick here for maybe make it 0 0.9. And perhaps we want to increase the number to 5,000. Let's increase it to 20,000. And uh, Perhaps we want to change the color quickly of our emission. Let's turn it back on so we can see it. And let's go to our render settings. Let's make that invisible again. And let's uh, reduce the radius. Let's pause this so we can see and reduce the radius of our bloom. So currently that's too much. In fact, I'm gonna change my environmental texture to one from HDR Haven. You can go get download one there for free. I'm gonna use this one, the old hall, 8K. We'll take a second to load. I should have used the Milky Way. That would have been better. I just don't know where it is on my PC. And now we can go to our render settings and just play around with the radius. So no radius is here. Some radius is here. And perhaps we want to make this radius a different color. So perhaps we want to make it red. And then we probably want to increase the radius to the max and the intensity to the max and mess with this threshold. So this isn't working. Let's try it. There we go. And just mess with this threshold, make it less and make it higher. Let's make this nine. Let's make this five. Let's make this two. And you kind of just have to play with this until you get the right desired effect. Let's make this zero. Let's make this three. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. Perhaps we should make this darker. We're gonna make that orange and then I'm actually gonna use the Milky Way. You can download this Milky Way image at svs.gsfcnas.com.
nasa.gov forward slash 3895. And when you click, click download, 8K is the 81921 one size. It's about 40.7 megabytes. Alternatively, you, you can just use whatever image you prefer to use. All right, once you've downloaded it, click on your downloads and try and find. There we go, star map, boom. It will take a little while to load, especially when it's 8K. And now we'll have a better perspective of everything. Now, off the bat, I'm going to quickly turn off Bloom. Yeah, so Bloom is ruining the scene, so I have to adjust the Bloom settings. Let's make this white. One, two, three, four, five. So it's automatically green then, but we have to reduce this intensity to about 0 0.025 and I'm quite happy with that it's a lot more noticeable and just like that we have created a stream basically that follows our main mesh I feel like we've got to make our main mesh a little bit more interesting. It's not really standing out. So perhaps we should make it gold and make this z Perhaps we can't make it glossy in this case unless we add a light source. I think we'll add a light source. Okay, press Shift A. Let's click on light, sun. And let's change the strength to 10 make it slightly warmer what happens when we make this 100 rotate shift D X rotate let's take a look at this Let's look at this up through our camera lens. Oh, we need to add a camera, shift A, camera. And now we want to press control, alt, number at zero, G. And most importantly, let's actually press S to scale the center, but let's press reduce increase this a little bit to about there then add a object constraint known as damp track and select our our sphere and click minus C and perhaps this object yeah you want to make this 0 0.3 0 0.4 no let's make this 0 0.2 and let's just change the light source a little bit for one of these suns and let's view this quickly And uh, you kind of just have to tweak this until you get the look and feel that you like. I'm going to put this on 0 0.15. And the final thing I want to do, I'm kind of done with the tutorial. That was the main thing I wanted to try and play around with. Um, I'm going to do a more advanced tutorial around this later on that makes it look like streams. But let's just add some things in the scene. Uh, more UV spheres this over here and give this an emission 30 let's make it blue and pad 7 shift D check this over here let's make this green shift D let's 
make this red. Mistake I made is I didn't add new materials. Now to press new, new, and go to emission and choose green 30. Click assign. One thing I could do is just minus that. Select this, minus that, new. You know what, actually will be interesting to leave it on that to see if this, no, it won't have any impacts at no point. Emission, 30, and blue. Numpad 1, G, Z. G, And this must go, yeah, and put one, G. Here we go. So now when we view this animation, it should look somewhat interesting. And perhaps we just want to reduce the strength of these suns to 30. Honestly, 30 is also too high. Let's make it 10 and 10. And I think we're pretty much done. Did I turn on screen space reflection? Let's turn on refraction. Go to keyframe one and press play. And if we want high quality shadows, we can go to volumetrics, put this on two, and I think we A4 away. We're pretty much done. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.